I want to show you ArcGIS Indoors. This is the San Diego Convention Center. And you can turn on different base layers like imagery or any of the others that are part of the Living Atlas. Let's zoom in now to the Convention Center. And you can see as you zoom in, you get greater levels of detail within all the floors at the Convention Center. It's a multi-floor facility. So if I were to select a specific room, then you could see detailed information about it and get directions to that room. When I was there, I was staying over at this hotel at the Sapphire Room. I gave a, a presentation there. So I needed to know how to get from that other building into the convention center and then to that. And then I could change modes, whether I was walking or through a wheelchair. And then I could see how long it would take me to get from the hotel to that office, that space in the convention center. If I'd liked, I could share that information by printing it with another person. I could share that. I could click on information about that room and share that or send that in an email to someone else as well. So details about that room can be sent. So I'm going to send that to David James and I'm going to ask him to meet me in that room. So we were going to present there together. So I want to send that information to him so he then could open that link in his email and it would zoom into that location. And then he could, from wherever he was located, get directions in time to that room as well. Let's zoom in now and look at the Redlands campus in Southern California. And it's also in a 3D indoor model. So as I zoom in, you'll see that more levels of detail become available. And I'll tilt this. Remember, this is a web browser. So anybody with a web browser can log in and access this information. And this, like the convention center, is a multi-level facility. So let's zoom in and have a look at one of the floors. I can tilt and zoom and pan that around through my 3D viewer again on the web. No software, special software is required. So let's look at the details of this one room. I'll turn off the wireframe. And we can just zoom into this auditorium and I could click on that specific floor and that unit and see information about it. About the gross square footage, number of people who are there, or maybe even related information, calendar events, for example. So if I wanted to see what events were happening through time, you can see that there's a date and time associated with this event. And then I could, again, share that information and tell David that I'd like him to attend this seminar. And once he receives that email after I click send, then he would simply click that link and it would zoom into that specific location and he could navigate to it as well. So let's have a look now at a little bit more detail about the navigation capabilities inside ArcGIS Indoors. So I could, from my location, find that seminar, and this is my office. So I'd be able to then find out how long it would take me, of course, to get from one place to another. And that's not just with the facilities or an event, but it could be anything like a place of interest or assets. So. If I were to put assets in, I could see them as well. Now, navigating from one place to another in ArcGIS Indoors is simple with this app. Based on my mode or maybe my restrictions, based on whatever security clearance I would have, it could route me through or around restricted areas that I don't have access to because of my level of permissions. So that's part of the indoor model is being able to do that. Let's turn all these places of interest. So all these points across the airport or across your facility can be loaded in and then you can see information like bike racks any of the other information that you have in your data model can be integrated into ArcGIS indoors for example someone might want to at the airport go to a restaurant and again nothing new from where i am to where i want to go i want to find out how long it will take me to get there and then a preferred route if i don't have access through restricted areas then it would not allow me to route through there so you can see that it would take me maybe eight minutes to get from my office to that location. And again, you can see the mode of travel. Now, for some reason, we could load safety and security on it. For some reason, I was at that restaurant and I needed to know how to get out of this facility from the location where I was. That would be a real simple task that you could perform on your mobile device even if you wanted to so if there were a, an event that happened or something unusual or maybe a first responder had to go to that location they could use this app for that purpose specifically for safety and security so you can see I have other safety and security infrastructure 
like fire extinguishers, AEDs, inside my indoor model. Now I noticed that there was a fire extinguisher when I was doing my inspections. I noticed a fire extinguisher needed to be serviced. So I could zoom into that fire extinguisher using the indoor model, whether it's on my phone or on a mobile device or my computer. Then I could see detailed information about that specific fire extinguisher. And I'm going to again send an email about that issue where this extinguisher needs to be inspected. So I wrote David an email saying he needed to go look at it. And David's job would be to conduct that inspection. So he would open up that email and it would take him directly to that spot. And then using his mobile phone, he would open up the mobile app and be able to navigate using indoors directly to that fire extinguisher, saving him a bunch of time. I could see details about that fire extinguisher. And then I would open up a related app like this survey so I could start collecting information for my 311 about the fire extinguisher inspection. So I'm going to, as David inspects that fire extinguisher as part of this quarterly check, the map places that position right where the fire extinguisher is located, automatically assign the date and time. And once the inspection is done, he takes a picture and then he shares that information along with his name. So it becomes a permanent part of a 311 database that winds up then becoming useful for asset management. So that could create a work order. Also, the Indoors app comes in a kiosk mode as well, which could be useful for employees and the general public at that facility. So once again, very simple. It would have a UR here, and then it would give directions to any of the other facilities or events. And then you could see how quickly the route information would be generated and the time it would take.